Contamination of samples and reagents can be a major problem if you're extracting and amplifying DNA, especially outside of a traditional laboratory. Fortunately, there are a number of things that you can do to work cleanly, minimize contamination, and to deal with any contamination if it does occur. This video is brought to you by Bento Lab, a DNA analysis laboratory that you can take anywhere. Hi, I'm Brian Douglas from Bento Lab. In this video, I will give you 10 essential tips and tricks to avoid contamination when extracting and amplifying DNA. These are especially useful if you're working in a portable or home setting. What do I mean by contamination? Well, contamination is anything that can get into any of your samples, equipment, or reagents, which could cause it damage or interfere with your results. Let's look at three different types of contamination. First, environmental contamination. This includes dust, fungal or bacterial spores, fingerprints, sneezes, and many other possible sources. If you're doing very sensitive work, it can be essential to exclude all possible environmental contamination. The second type is PCR product contamination. This is concentrated DNA from previous PCR runs that you or others may have produced in the past. There could be traces of this in your workspace or on your pipettes, and some of it could get into your reagents. This is a very big problem for all users because if you're trying to amplify the same kind of DNA from new samples, then you could just end up reamplifying this old PCR product, giving you the wrong result again and again until you clean up the contamination. The third type is cross-contamination. This could be from samples, DNA extractions, PCR products, or reagents. You don't want to get any of these things contaminated with each other by accident because in some cases it could cause experiments to fail or give you false positives. So how do we avoid contamination? Here are 10 tips. Number one, always wear gloves and don't hesitate to change gloves often. If you want to use fewer gloves, try the more durable kind. You can wipe them down with bleach wipes to clean them. If you want to avoid wearing gloves, only do this in steps where there is no chance of any contamination happening and when there's no health and safety concern. Number two, use new pipette tips. Change the tip if you accidentally touch it to anything it shouldn't touch. Never use the same pipette tip for two different reagents or for two different samples. For more sensitive work, consider using filter tips. These are more expensive, but they protect your pipette from aerosol contamination. If the inside of your pipette collects reagent aerosols, you can spread contamination into anything else that you pipette even after changing the pipette tip. Make sure that you dispose of pipette tips, especially if they have been used for PCR products. Number three, treat your pipette carefully. A key risk of contamination is the pipette that you use for PCR products. Contamination can collect on the inside of the pipette if you don't use filter tips, or on the outside of the pipette if you get PCR product on your fingers when opening tubes. If you can, Use a separate pipette for pipetting PCR products. Regularly clean your pipette with bleach wipes or spray and store it separately in its own container such as a bag. Clean the inside of the pipette by disassembling the pipette and soaking the shaft in dilute bleach for 15 minutes and wipe off the bleach thoroughly with wet paper towels to avoid corrosion. Number four, create a clean working space. You want to avoid anything that may interfere with your DNA work. Exactly how clean depends on the kind of work that you're doing, but it is best to keep your surfaces as clean and sterile as possible. For your general working area, you can use a wipe down plastic tablecloth to protect both your samples and your workspace. You can use a plastic tray that you bleach between uses. To do this, clean the tray with bleach wipes or spray on some dilute bleach. I usually use a 10% dilution of thin bleach. You can leave the bleach on for around 15 minutes and then wipe it down thoroughly with wet paper towels. You can also use a new sheet of aluminium foil as a work surface, or even a clean sheet of paper. Make sure that the material comes from the inside of a pack, so it's unlikely to have been touched before. Both of these options are usually clean enough for most PCR work, and you can throw them in the bin after the experiment. Number five, keep your samples away from environmental contaminants, each other, and any PCR products. Handle each sample with gloves on a clean sheet of paper or aluminium foil. Store the sample after use and then dispose of the paper or foil after every sample. Keep your samples in bags in a box. 
so that you can wipe down any contamination off the bags and boxes and your samples will remain uncontaminated. Keeping every sample in separate tubes or bags can help avoid cross-contamination. Number six, use clean sampling tools or sterilized tools in between use. If you're cutting up a small part of a sample to extract DNA, you should use a clean razor blade or scalpel and clean tweezers if you use one to put the sample into a tube. I do most of my work with double-edged razor blades snapped in half. These are sterile enough for most purposes and you can dispose of the used half after every sample. You will want to reuse some tools like tweezers and scalpels, so you can bleach these in a 10% dilution of thin domestic bleach for 5-10 to 10 minutes and then wash and wipe them with a clean piece of paper towel. This will get them sterile enough for most purposes. Number 7. Be careful with your gel tank and electrophoresis buffer. Gel trays and buffers are a major source of PCR contamination because you are regularly pipetting a lot of PCR product into them. Ideally, the DNA just goes into the wells and then stays in the gel, but you can accidentally pipette into the buffer or you can run the gel too long, running the PCR product off the gel into the buffer. Be very careful when handling the gel, the gel tank and any used running buffer. If you touch a used gel, buffer or unclean gel tank, don't touch anything else without changing gloves first. Dispose of the running buffer somewhere where it won't cause contamination problems. If you don't have access to a lab sink, avoid your kitchen sink. You can pour the buffer into a disposable bottle or down the toilet. Before storing the gel tank, wipe down the outside with a bleach wipe or a bleach spray. Number eight, separate steps by time or space. Ideally, you want to separate preparation steps from handling PCR products. Often, you can prepare DNA samples or set up PCR reactions in a different room or space to where you run the PCR and where you visualize the gel. If you can also use different tools, such as pipettes or beakers, for these steps, then there will be little chance for cross-contamination to occur. If you have limited space, you can also separate steps by time by cleaning in between every experiment. Start with a clean workspace for DNA extraction and PCR setup, and then after running a gel, thoroughly clean all of your tools. Wipe down your PCR working area with a bleach wipe or spray your equipment with diluted bleach. Leave it for 15 minutes and wipe off the bleach thoroughly with wet paper towels. This way you can work with a small lab footprint but with a much smaller risk of contamination. Number 9. Aliquot your reagents into small volumes. When reagents are contaminated, they need to be thrown away and it can be expensive to replace them. You can reduce this risk by aliquoting your reagents into smaller volumes and freezing them. That way, if your reagents are contaminated, you only lose a small amount rather than the total volume. Number 10. If in doubt, clean it or store it separately until you can clean it. If you think you have any chance of contamination, take time to consider how you can best clean the contamination up. Whether this is by using new gloves or pipette tips, or by using a new piece of foil as a working space. You should also adopt this attitude at the end of any PCR experiment so that you don't have to worry as much when you start a new experiment at a later date. There are, of course, a lot of other possible ways to avoid contamination, but I hope these 10 tips will help you avoid any issues for as long as possible. And when contamination does happen, you will have a better idea of how to manage it quickly without wasting time and money. Ultimately, sterile practices are a matter of personal judgment. You have to decide your own approach, depending on your experiment. You can find more resources for accessible bioscience on our website. Check out the link in the description below. If you found this video useful, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. If you have any questions or have any more tips on how to avoid contamination problems, please leave a comment. We would love to hear from you. Thank you.